My name is Uzinakis. I'm a general in reserve. In 1967, I was the commander of the Central Front that included Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. And the front ran from uh, Hadera all the way to Gedera. The, the tension of the whole country was to the south because the Israeli government wanted to fight only against the Egyptians. Nobody supposed that something would have happened in Jerusalem. But all of a sudden, it did happen. The Jordanians shelled Jerusalem. And then on June the 5th, 1967, it was a Monday, I had to decide whether Jerusalem was an incident or a war. If it's an incident, we have to calm it down. If it's a war, we'll have to counterattack. After two hours, after jo uh, the Jordanians um, captured the government house, I decided that it really was a war and that I have to counterattack. For that counterattack, I was scared of one thing, not of the enemy, but of a ceasefire. Because, you know, Jerusalem is, everybody knows where it is. It's so complicated a subject. And I was afraid of a uh, ceasefire that would be decided by the Security Council in New York. Because when we began, it was Monday afternoon. Monday afternoon in New York, it's already 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock. That's why I decided to do everything as to do it as quickly as possible. At the beginning, there was almost nobody here except one brigade, the Jerusalem Brigade. And then I got another brigade, the 10th Brigade, Harel, in which I fought, and the commander of that brigade fought in 1948. So it was also symbolic. And then the paratroopers arrived instead of fighting as an additional force in the Sinai, they came to Jerusalem. And then I said to myself, hallelujah, I'll be able to do it. At night, about 2 o'clock in the morning, I asked the general staff, what do they think? When do we have to begin? To begin the attack on the old city of uh, Jerusalem. They said, why won't you wait for the morning? Then you'll have heavy artillery and the Air Force. So I said, heavy artillery, forget about it. I know, everything is in the south. So nothing will arrive until tomorrow. Secondly, the Air Force, they're the best that we have, but sometimes they miss and they hit something else instead of uh, the real target, and East Jerusalem is a concentration of holy places. So I prefer to begin immediately, although we didn't have more than three hours of night time. I consulted with Colonel Gour, the commander of the paratroopers, and he agreed, and the paratroopers commanders, battalion commanders agreed too. So at two o'clock in the morning, we did begin. And at about uh, 5 o'clock in the morning, 6 o'clock in the morning, the whole uh, line, fortified line that divided Jerusalem into west and east was broken through. Tuesday, Moshe Dayan calls me, Ozi, I heard that the road to Mount Scopus is open. He said, OK, I'd like to come and visit it, as if he wanted to cut the ribbon. I said, why not? Please come. He came, Ezer Weizmann came too, and we took a jeep and went up to Mount Scopus and stood on the roof of the National Library of the old uh, Hebrew University. And we were staring at the Muslim besieged city between the walls, the old city. And I said to Diane, Moshe, 2,000 years ago, two people were standing here 
also staring at the old city of Jerusalem. They were General Titus, the Roman chief of staff, and Josephus Flavius, who wrote the history. And Titus says to uh, Flavius, I am going to level this evil city of Jerusalem who brings me most of the troubles in my empire to such a degree that it would never survive and come up of its ashes. So he rides down. He did what he said. But 2,000 years later, where are the Romans, Moshe? We are here. So we were there. So I said to Moshe Dayan, Moshe, now I need the political authorization to break through into the old city of Jerusalem because it needed a political authorization. And as I said already, I was really afraid of a resolution, a ceasefire resolution. It could have come any minute. So he says, ah, why do you need all this Vatican, you know, between the world? So I said, uh, yes, I think that we need it. And then after Tuesday comes Wednesday, Wednesday morning, 6 o'clock, comes the political authorization. The Israeli government decided that I'm authorized to break through into the old city of Jerusalem. And it came through the low and calm voice of uh, Chaim Alev. And he says, Uzi, you must immediately break through into the old city of Jerusalem. Do it intelligently, but very quickly. We are afraid of a ceasefire. So I passed immediately the order to Motagur. And uh, he was at that time at the Rockefeller Museum. And that was at 6 o'clock in the morning, or quarter past 6. And at 10 o'clock, they were, the paratroopers were at the Lion's Gate with the tank at the head of them, and then a half truck. And the tank broke through the Lion's Gate, and all of them immediately after him, they took to the left to Temple Mount, and from there to the wall. And in a few minutes after them, we were there, Balev and myself near the wall. Here I would like to raise a vote of thanks to King Hussein because King Hussein decided not to continue the war. That's how we did not have any casualties fighting in the old city of Jerusalem. 10 o'clock in the morning at the wall, it was fantastic. How can I tell you? I was so happy and satisfied, happy that we were there, and satisfied that destiny chose me to be the messenger of the people of Israel to bring back the wall into the midst of the Jewish people. I was re it was really great. I have a sense of history. I was born in Jerusalem raised in Jerusalem, fought for Jerusalem in 1948. And in my stomach in 67, among all the sentiments, what I had in myself was that this time it was an opportunity to heal what we miss, missed in 1948. In 1948, in May, I was the one who commanded the capture of Mount Zion and gave the order to my troops, the Palmach platoon of 18 soldiers, to get to break through into the Zion Gate. But I was also the one who gave the order to withdraw. And after 19 years, it was again the same commander, but that time who gave the order, you know, to liberate the old city of Jerusalem. So what does it mean? 
that uh, historically speaking, uh, <laughs> after 19 years, I was compensated. The Jewish people, without Israel, without the land of Israel, or the state of Israel, without Judea of 2,000 years ago, without a home here in this place, with only the remnant of the second temple physically here. Nobody knew where it was, but spiritually in the heart of every Jew, a religious one, a secular one. Everybody says next, uh, next year in Jerusalem. And some believed in it. And it took 2,000 years, and all of a sudden, the opportunity stood up and said to us, try it, do it, don't waste time. So we did it. In 67, I think that we felt so decisive, and the fact that everybody felt that nobody had the time. You know, it was not a question of three months or four months, it was a question of a few hours. Because if, as we say in Hebrew, chas v'chalila, God forbid, a ceasefire takes place, I think that everybody, not only the commanders, not only Motagur, Uri Ben-Ari, Eliezer Amitai, but the soldiers themselves, they understood what happened, that it was an opportunity, and we have to do everything, including exposing, you know, one's own life. And we had uh, 181 casualties in eight hours only of net combat from Monday, four o'clock in the afternoon, until Wednesday, 10 o'clock in the morning. Less than three days, Jerusalem was ours.